Number 88. How much solid NaCH3CO2-3H2O must be added to 0.300 liters of a 0.50 molarity acetic acid solution to give a buffer with a pH of 5.00? Hint. Assume a negligible change in volume as the solid is acid. Did I say solid is acid? Solid is added. Cool. All right. So let's get down to business. A couple of key words that are standing out uh, to me here, right? They're telling us that we definitely have a buffer solution and they give us a pH value. When you're talking about buffers and they give you a pH or you're looking for a pH, the easiest way to go about these types of problems is using the henderson hasselbalch equation, which is this one right here. We're only, use, we're only allowed to use henderson hasselbalch um, for buffers and uh, th that's basically it. Now, what a buffer solution is, is you have to have conjugates. So you have to have a, a conjugate acid-base pair that only differs from one hydrogen. Now, they did tell us that we're starting off with acetic acid, right? And acetic acid comes from acetate. Acetate is CH3CO2 minus. And then with the hydronium in the front because it's an acid. It's a plus one and a minus one. So basically, acetic acid would just be HCH3CO2. Generally speaking, if we write it this way, the H would be at the end here. So this has to be the acid. It literally says the word acid of the, com you know, the component. So that means if I'm using the, uh, buffer equation, the henderson hasselbalch I have to have a base. Now, the only thing that they told us was that they asked for how much of the solid NaCH3CO2-3H2O. Now, this is a hydrate because I do see that dot and then water. But nonetheless, I do see a conjugate here. CH3CO2, CH3CO2. So this is actually disguising itself as like a salt because I have a metal in the front and a hydrate as the whole thing. But that's okay. Just as long as you have the conjugate somewhere in there, we're good to go. So we know that the base would be the CH3CO2 minus. Cool. Now, let's run through this. Did they give us a pH? Yes, they did. So we're not going to solve for that here. They told us that the pH was 5.00. Now, did they specifically give us a pKa? Not by just reading the question. However, since this is from a textbook, right, it's fair game that you go in the back to check out the reference charts to find the pKa or the Ka value to answer this. So even though... It was not given here since this came from a, a textbook source that you could have gotten that number in the textbook. So I just wrote it down here. So let's just go and get that value, the pKa. Now I went in the back of the textbook. I found out that the Ka value for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So how do I go from a Ka value to the pKa that I need in henderson hasselbalch Well, that's this formula right here pKa is always just the negative log of the Ka. So if I just bring this up, right? Whoop. If I just bring this up and maybe push this a little bit over here, I can say that if the Ka value is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, I could just use this formula to solve for the pKa. So pKa equals, maybe I'll say equals, the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, pKa equals, calcies out, negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So I get 4.74. Uh, 4.7, eh, I mean, I guess, since this isn't the... The full answer, I guess I'll round. So 4.745.
and that's going to be the pKa value. Okay, so now we know that. 7, 4, 5. Now the only units that are allowed in this part of the equation to find out how much base or acid you have, the only two units that are allowed are molarity and moles. But they gave us molarity, capital M, molarity, and they gave us the molarity for the acid. So I know that this has to be 0.5 molarity. But now did they tell us how much base we had, right? How much of the acetate ion did we have? No, but I gotta have a variable somewhere in my calculation. And keep in mind that that's what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to solve for how much of that solid. So I'm going to solve for this. And now since we have the variable, I can use the Henderson Hasselbalch to find out what I need. So here we go, 5.0 equals the 4.745 plus the log of the base, which is x, divided by the acid, which is 0 0.50. Okay, now I want to get x by itself, but it's grouped together with the log. So what I would have to do is I would have to pull this 4 value over to the other side. So I'll just subtract by 4.745 on both sides. And now on the right side of the equation, I have the log of the x value divided by the acid, 0 0.50. And now 5 minus 4.745 is 0 0.255. Now I want to get rid of the log, but what's the inverse of a log? The inverse of a log is 10 to the, but remember, you got to be fair. If you raise the right side of the equation by 10 to the, I got to raise the left side of the equation by 10 to the, and because you did that, the word log goes away and the fraction now just exists by itself. Pretty cool. So, and actually I don't need parentheses anymore because now it's just a, a random fraction X over the 0.50. But now I just have to do 10 raised to the 0.255. So 10 raised to 0.255. And this is not the answer yet. So you can, you know, extend as many decimals as you want. 1.798, I guess 9. And that equals x over 0.5. We want to solve for x. So cross multiply. And we found out what the molarity of the base was. So maybe what I'll do is I'll just say that x, which was the base, C2H3O2 minus, that's going to be 1.7989 times 0.5. And I get 0 0.89945 molarity. Okay. Now hold the phone because did we answer the question? Let's see. They're asking for how much solid must be added. Now keep in mind that this we only found up found of the conjugate base, the acetate ion, but we did not solve for the full compound with the sodium and the water. If you have a solid, right? How can we measure a solid? Usually we put it on a balance, right? And what does a balance measure? It will measure grams. So because they said that it was a solid, the unit that they want us to solve this for is grams. Right at the moment, we are at molarity. So now I got to go from molarity to grams. Well, how do I do that? Well, I think of the molarity formula, right? Remember, and maybe if I can, I'll just scooch this over just so that I have a little bit more room. Now I remember the molarity formula, molarity equals moles divided by liters. We just found out that molarity, 
0 0.89945. And they said that there was negligible change in volume as the solid was added. So this volume, the 0.3 liters, is what the whole solution's in. So I know that the liter value was 0 0.300, and I can solve for moles. If I just rearrange this formula, it would be the same as just saying, okay, moles equals molarity times the liters. So let's just pick it up from there. Uh, did I say, yeah, moles equals molarity times liters. So it'd be the 0 0.89945 times the 0 0.300. And now that's how many moles of the acetate that I have. So let's see. This times 0.3 and I get 0 0.269835 moles of the acetate, C2H3O2 minus. All right, we're getting closer. We're not there yet, but we're getting closer. So for right now, what I'm gonna say is pause the video uh, if you need to write anything down, but I'm just gonna get rid of basically the Henderson-Hasselbach and the PKA formula. So all of this is going, and this has got to go, unfortunately. Bye-bye. And we're basically just left with the moles. Now, we're starting with 0 0.269835 moles of the acetate, C2H3O2. Now, keep in mind that I can make a, a relationship, right? How many C3H, uh, CH3CO2s are in this whole compound? There was only one of them, right? There's no parentheses here saying that I have two of them. So for every one compound, there's one acetate. So it's a one-to-one -one uh, relationship, and we love those because that means that this would be the same as 0.269835 moles of the whole hydrate. Based on the premise that there was one of these for every one hydrate. And now I have moles of the hydrate. And I can go from moles to grams. That's going way back, right? Just doing that conversion right, the stoichiometry. So 0 0.269835, and maybe I'll do it in a different color, moles of now the Na C2H3 O2 dot 3H2O. Now I just want to times by a ratio, throw the unit that I don't want on the bottom. So that's moles of the Na C2H3O2.3H2O, and the grams are going on the top of the sodium acetate, CH3O2.3H2O. And remember, if I'm using my gram to mole conversion, you always have one mole. So one mole on the periodic table equals the amount in grams on that periodic table. So I just have to find out this number. So periodic table time, we have to add up all of this. You have to include these H's and these O's as well. So let's see. Uh, 22.99 plus 2 times 12.01 plus 3 times the 1.008, that's for hydrogen, plus 2 times 16, that's the oxygen, now I have to do the water. So there's now six additional hydrogens and then three additional oxygens because keep in mind that this three gets distributed. So the mass here would be 136.082. Moles cancel out with moles. And now all it is is just this number times the 136. All right, so point 
269.835 times 136.082. Now sig figs are coming into play. Uh, two sig figs I do see here as the molarity, so we'll give two sig figs. So that's kind of weird. So we could just say like 37, 37 grams of the sodium acetate trihydrate, the Na. C2H3O2 dot 3H2O. Wonderful. And that's your answer. So how much solid? We need to add 37 grams. And that's it. Okay. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Uh, keep up the awesome work. Good luck on all your future tests and quizzes. And if you want to help us out, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're almost at 20,000 subscribers at the moment. It's absolutely incredible, and it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much for your help. This has been a crazy journey, and my brother and I, we really hope that we are giving you great educational content out there so that you can succeed in your classes. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.